is a great question. See, the thing is, I've been you know, alluding to the, this point from the beginning in, in this discussion. See, unless we have a real solution to this, okay, we cannot rely on point solutions. You know, we cannot rely on uh, just uh, uh, corticosteroids and high doses. They have, you know, the, their, uh, the, their duration effect effectiveness is very limited. And if we keep on pumping you know, people with uh, high dose corticosteroids, we have to deal with the consequences not too far from now. Okay. And same thing with high dose antibiotics and you know, all, all the antivirals. Okay. Once the virus is gone, as I've explained, once the virus is gone, you know, just giving an antiviral is like you know, calling the fire engine after the house has burned down. I have used that analogy before. Okay. Now, we have to have a real solution. Not, not just you know, antivirals or not just uh, you know, the immunosuppressants, not just antibiotics, not just you know, fluid support. We have to have a solution that is comprehensive and complete. Okay, now let's look at how the viral replication happens. Okay, in every cell, there is a, in every cell of our body, there is a, a nuclear receptor called a vitamin D receptor that vitamin D receptor expects to be occupied by its complement, vitamin D. Once that, that happens, that joining happens, vitamin D and vitamin D receptor, okay, wonderful things start happening. Vitamin D receptor you know, is in uh, its role in, in modulating so many things, not only, not only immune, the immune system, but the genetic expression, uh, gene expression, it, it, vitamin D receptor is a gene expression modulator as well. So there are so many things that that vitamin D is is uh, is is a is a part of and controls and modulates and and uh, and makes them work the way they are they are, they are designed. Okay, first of all, let's look at the virus. Once the virus gains access into the cell, virus does not have the mechanisms or the paraphernalia uh, for, for it to replicate on its own. So what happens is once it goes into the cell, it has to hijack. It has to access the cellular transcription mechanisms inside the cell. Those cellular transcription mechanisms are vitamin D receptor dependent. So these are, that, and there, there is a lot of published evidence in the scientific literature. We have to just take a step back and examine all this evidence. All the clinicians, all the doctors, my appeal to all the doctors is, let's step back, take a step back and examine the evidence. Okay. So vitamin D receptor dependent transcription mechanism. So that is what it, the, these transcription mechanisms are the ones that the virus needs access to, to replicate itself, to manufacture its proteins so that it can assemble itself and, and uh, multiply. So, and if vitamin D, vitamin D receptor is instrumental in doing that, okay? And if vitamin D gives it the discernment to do what it is supposed to do, and if a person is vitamin D deficient, what happens in that person? is vitamin D, this transcription mechanisms can be easily accessed by the virus. And that is where the replication happens. So if a person, you know, the replication, I think one, one study that needs to be done is you know, a, a, a person who has uh, proper vitamin D levels and a person who does not have proper vitamin D levels and the replication that happens in, in these two people will be remarkably different. Okay? So vitamin D helps stop the replication viral replication or control the viral replication. So, you know, the person is not laden with massive viral load in a, in a very short period of time. Okay, so that is, that is one way vitamin D works. And the second way is, you know, we have the immune system. We, we are talking so much about the immune system. Okay, you have the innate immunity, okay, and the adaptive immunity. These are the two branches of the immune system. Okay, in the innate immunity, there are immune cells and even in those, there is this vitamin D receptor. And if that vitamin D receptor is occupied by vitamin D, and there are, that means if you have proper vitamin D levels, that upregulates some compounds called, you know, th there are some uh, compounds, antiviral compounds, and, and uh, uh, cathelicidins and, uh, uh, and beta defensins. And these will latch on to the beta defensins, will uh, latch on to the viral envelope and start uh, uh, making that viral particle non-viable, okay? So, and vitamin D is important for the innate immunity to work properly. That is the first line of defense, okay, that we have in our body, that innate immunity. And I've been talking about the adaptive immunity, the specific immunity. Even in that, you know, if you, do, uh, there are two ways these immune reactions can 
proceed. One is TH1 pathway, T helper cell one pathway, and TH2 pathway, T helper cell two pathway. And TH1 pathway tends to be, it is extremely inflammatory. And that is where the IL-6, interleukin-6 comes from. And TH2 pathway is, uh, is anti-inflammatory. And uh, the, see, the thing is, if you have proper vitamin D levels, these reactions predictably and repeatably proceed to TH2 pathway. So if we have proper vitamin D levels, this immune system learns that, okay, you know what? These two, bran two, two branches of the immu adaptive immunity have to function hand in hand and there has to be a balance and, and, and it has to, you know, it activates the TH2 pathway as well. And if you do not have enough vitamin D in our bodies, almost always these reactions shift towards TH1 pathway. Okay, and generate this IL-6 in massive quantities. And IL-6 in massive quantities is like pouring acid into our lungs. That is, that is one thing. So I have given you three ways vitamin D, uh, vitamin D helps. Now, let, let's look at the fourth way. And in these people, the, uh, uh, in, in people who are affected by coronavirus, COVID, the D-dimer levels, they go through the roof. D-dimer is a, is a marker that is, an, uh, that is indicating that there, there are blood clots happening in the body. Okay. That is coming from the massive endothelial damage that is resulting from this immune system attacking this, uh, the, uh, or uh, the, uh, even the virus or immune system attacking this endothelial layers in the, in the circulatory system. Okay. That is where this micro clots, microcoagulation is coming from. And that is what is increasing this, uh, this, um, this, this uh, D-dimer levels uh, extremely high. So now we have given, we have seen people with almost 8,000 um, picograms of, uh, um, of D-dimer and that is 500 or lower is normal. And in these people, we have given, you know, vitamin D in proper doses for one day. And we have seen those levels come down from 8,000 or 5,000 to almost 300, 200 to proper, proper levels. So vitamin D can stabilize the tight junction integrity in this uh, in, in in the endothelium, and it can it can preserve the tight junction integrity and prevent the damage that is happening in the endo, endothelium endothelial layers. And the fifth way it works well uh, works is it stabilizes the respiratory epithelium. And these are all I am not just dreaming up things and I am just mouthing it off. This is based on sound scientific knowledge and sound scientific research and published evidence. Okay. That is the fifth way. And the sixth way is, it, uh, in, in the later stages of this disease, this, uh, you, you, what we have is this is a renin-angiotensin system. The pulse rates keep going up and up and up and up. Okay. And you know, we have these wonderful monitors that are pulse oximeters, and everybody is paying attention to the first number, oxygen saturation, and completely uh, throwing away that another important vital piece of evidence that is uh, the pulse rate. And if it keeps on going up and up and up, that points to these reactions that are happening, immune reactions that are proceeding in TH1 pathway and generating massive inflammation. Okay? Once that happens, okay, that is uh, renin angiotensin system is getting into overdrive and vitamin D is the perfect modulator of the renin angiotens angiotensin system. It downregulates renin. Okay? You can predictably see if you give it in, you know, when you have a resting pulse rate of 145, 150 in an adult individual, he is reaching a crisis proportion right there. Okay? And that is when acute lung injury happens and saturations will start going down. Okay? So, and and uh, you can give a, you know, a one dose of vitamin D3 every 15, 15 minutes or so, and within an hour, their pulse rates come down to completely almost uh, a normal level. Okay? And, and saturations also improve. So I have given you in this just in this brief overview of three to four minutes, I have given you six ways of vitamin, uh, how vitamin D works. When I said we need a complete solution, vitamin D seems to fit the bill, doesn't it? Yes. 